everybody and welcome to the Chemistry 121 Supplemental Instruction videos. This episode we're going to be talking about significant figures. Hey, did someone say significant figures? I did. How's it going, Kevin? Oh, not bad. I'm Kevin Martin. And we'll be presenting this episode for you guys today. Yeah, so sig figs. What are those? Significant figures. Significant figures. Well, you know, they're kind of an, it's an interesting concept because I mean, if you were to measure, say, a cup of flour in your kitchen at home, there's varying levels of the accuracy of that measurement because, you know, sometimes it might be a little bit higher than a cup, sometimes it'll be a little bit lower than a cup. So okay. the accuracy differs a little bit. And when it comes to science, when you work in a lab or anything like that, the same sort of stuff applies because if you were to put a sample of a chemical, you know, on a weighing scale, um, you know, the accuracy, the precision of how much that weight is could vary. So, for example, we'll say that I have... Well, I draw a picture. Picture is good, would you say? Oh yeah, picture is very visual. Well, say I got a beaker like this, and I don't know, I got a lump of something in there. Lump of coal? Lump of coal, sure. We'll say it's a lump of coal. After um, all, it is a chemical. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, everything is. Okay, so we'll say that we put this beaker with a lump of coal onto a way onto two, you know, we'll say two or three different, um, you know, weighing scale things. So we'll say the first one measures this lump of coal to be. 30 grams. Okay. And we'll say the second one measures it to be 30.12 grams. 30.12, you say? Yeah. And then we'll say that the third scale is going to measure it to be 30.12431 grams. Well, these different scales, why do they have such different values? Well, that has to do with the precision of how much, of how well they can weigh things. So it's essentially about the same weight, it's about 30 grams, but there's that little tiny itty bitty difference, the precision that differs, and that is significant figures. Oh, I see. Right? Okay, so when we look at these three different examples here, this one has only one significant figure. Wait, only one? Only one, I'll explain that in a okay. minute. This one has four. Okay. And this one has seven. Okay. Okay? So, when you look at significant figures, there's different ways in which you want to do this. Basically, when you have whole numbers like this, you know, no decimal at all, the zeros that come after the first non-zero number don't count. They're basically just placeholders. So that's why this one is only one significant figure. The three is significant. When you think about it, that makes sense because when we weighed this, there's that little tiny itty bitty difference. You know, it's 30, 30.12, 30.12431. So the zero right here isn't exactly significant. It could vary a little bit. That's where the precision comes in. Okay. So here, since this is a decimal point, we have the 30 point. The decimal, basically the thing to remember about decimals is that makes everything significant. If you see a decimal there, it's significant. Oh, so, I see. Yeah, and that kind of makes sense because we see here, we have increasing precision with these scales, and they put the decimal in there so we know they have more significant figures in them. Okay? Okay. So Kevin, how many sig figures do you think that one has? I believe seven. Seven, that's right, because that zero, because the decimal is there, it's going to be significant. It's not just a placeholder. Okay. So, one, four, seven. Okay? Okay. So, if we were to take some more challenging examples, let's say, um, we'll say that I change this 30 to be 301. How many sig figs do you think that would have? Hmm. Because we've got that zero there, there's no decimal point. If you were to take a wild guess, well, take a wild guess. Well, based on what you said, I mean, if, the, if the, there's no decimal point and there's a zero there, I would say two based on what you said. So that's a reasonable guess. But the thing to remember, Kevin, this is a really, good, this is a really important point. Uh -huh. The zero in the middle might be a placeholder. But you've got that one there, and that one is definitely significant. Oh. Okay? So you're saying anything, a zero between two non-zero numbers is significant? That's right. Oh, that makes sense. It's absolutely significant. Okay. Okay, because this is different. If I were to put 300 here, they're different numbers. Okay, but this one also has just one significant figure. Okay. Okay, those zeros are just placeholders. There's no non-zero number there. Right. Okay? But here's another thing. Remember about the decimals. And watch out for this on a test because you might get tricked if the question says how many sig figs are in this number. If I put a decimal right there, just a regular old decimal point, that makes those two zeros significant. That's saying that 300 is measured at a precision, it's 300 and those two zeros count. 
So this one here would have three sig figs. Okay. This one also has three, but the 30 there just has one. Okay. Okay. Now I have a question. Now what okay. if you have a number like that is, that is less than one? Say you have like 0 0.03. How many sig figs would that have? 0 0.03. Like that? Yeah. Okay. Well, what do you think? Well, I don't know. That's decimal points there. That yeah. decimal point supposedly makes zero significant. I would have to say three. Not quite. Oh. That's a reasonable guess, though. Now, this kind of goes back to scientific notation just a little bit. Because remember in scientific notation, when you have these little numbers, you want to look for the first non-zero number, right? Yeah. Okay. So here, the first non-zero number is the three which means that these other two zeros are also placeholders. They're not quite significant. Oh. Because once you start measuring after those zeros, that's when significant. So, so it kind of works backwards from numbers that are more than one, that are to the mm -hmm. left. Right, like okay. the big numbers versus the small numbers. Okay, that numbers. makes sense. Yeah, so if I were to do something like this, let's say I have 0 0.0301, like so, wow. now how many sig figs do you think that has? I would say three. That's right, because these two zeros are placeholders still. The three here is our first non-zero number. And then we notice we have that one zero there, just kind of sandwiched in between. So it's also significant. Okay. Okay? But what about this? If I have 0 0.0300? Zero, 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 that's, that's kind of tricky. tricky. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Well, before, I mean, I mean, you say that the decimal doesn't really affect, you know, to the left. Mm -hmm. Like before, there's no decimal there. You know, yeah. that is a pretty tricky one. That is um, a tricky one. I mean, we can't just put another decimal there. That's yeah defeats the whole purpose of it, so. I mean, I want to say one, but I know that's not going to be right. That's not going to be right. That's why I thought. Yeah, because again, we can take this and go back to our scale example. That scale has a really big precision, uh -huh. so the zeros Past this three, when you're working with a decimal, those will also be significant. Oh, okay. Okay, because that's, that's measuring two of precision, it's 0 .03, and that is precise, because okay. you have those two zeros after that. Well, that makes sense. Okay? So that's basically the basics for scientific notation. Okay. I mean, well. no, we already did that one. I'm losing my head. Yeah. yeah. This is the basics for significant figures. Yes. Yes. We've been here way too long. Mm -hmm. We should let these guys go. Yes. All right. See you later. All right. See you.